is Dominique Wilkins. And this is Sean Kepp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David and I welcome you to your weekly dose of old school NBA basketball. Now in the 1990s, the Los Angeles Lakers were one of my favorite teams and I'm not talking about the remaining parts of the Showtime Lakers. I'm actually talking about the Lakers with Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, Eddie Jones and Nick Van Axel. And yes, yeah, some of those players kind of got forgotten. So I thought, okay, let me see if I find some clips of Nick Van Axel, NBA legends talking about Nick the Quick. So I would say without any more blah blah, let's get right down into it. Now the first clip that I found was with Jamal Crawford who I had on my show not too long ago and we talked about many guys from the 1990s. He's also a huge fan of the 90s and he told me back then how much appreciation he has for Nick Van Axel. But here he's on another show. Let's take a look what he has to say. I don't say. like the catch-all stats, you know, and we can now look back at certain players from different eras and be like, oh, this, this guy wasn't as good as we thought he was, you know, because of whatever you know, singular stat we have for players. Was there a player in that era that maybe wasn't in their prime post 2008, let's say, that you think would destroy in 2023 in the NBA? I think a guy like Nick Van Axel, guy who's creative like that, guys that can shoot it, guys that get up and down the court and they can shoot it and play with that kind of pace and space. So the next part that I found you got to check out there is a documentary about the Los Angeles Lakers the history basically a 10 part uh, documentary I found it on the Disney Plus app you might also found it on Hulu but yeah very interesting especially if you're in a basketball story and you want to get more information check it out but this is what the clips are from let's take a look welcome to the 1993 NBA draft the Lakers needed a point guard, but you're spoiled. You're looking for the next Magic. I think Jerry West was just going to take the best player he could get. Now, the Los Angeles Lakers selected while we were away Nick Van Exel, the excellent point guard out of Cincinnati, although his stock, as you can tell by where he was selected, has slipped. Nick had a chip on his shoulder. You want a guy with a chip. It's just the question is, is can you channel it? I definitely wanted to prove people wrong, you know. It was just to go out there and, and crack heads, you know, at the end of the day, just make people pay. That's my guy. I remember when the Lakers got him. We used to go over his house and hang out, you know what I'm saying, and do what grown folks do. You understand me? Before the season, during the season, and after the season. Nick was just a baller. You know, some guys come in and they're not scared of anything. I love Nick the Quick. I love the, the shave thing in his eyebrow. That was just what we did in my hometown. That was our thing. You know, Big Daddy Kane, Kwame, you know, those guys putting two parts in the eyebrow. So that's what we did. From the start, Van Axel electrified the Lakers. How did he make that shot? He scored a thousand points as a rookie. Hit six threes in one game. And revived the spirit of Showtime in L.A. With a lot of antics I, I would do as far as, you know, the boxing, uh, the the little dances, just creating the vibe that L.A. was used to. Nick had a way of stirring up the crowd, you know, when he would make outstanding plays. He you know, liked that, and the crowd liked it. If you have one of those guys on your team, you're going to see an awful lot of kids walking around with jerseys on that bear that player's name. When he has the ball in his hand and it's the shot clock going down, he's not going to pass it. He's going to take the big shot. Nick can get the ball with one and a half seconds left and make something happen. He fires and the count of it goes. It wins! It wins! It wins! Van Exel drove the Lakers into the 95 playoffs. Lakers all the way. Led them to a first round rout of Seattle. He scored. Then hit an astonishing game winner in round two to keep the Lakers' hopes alive. Dale was old school, so he was all about the X's and O's and doing things the right way. 
He wanted real structured organization out there, and that's not how Nick wanted to play. He wanted his freedom. They bumped heads. Like, you, you can see it was a disconnect there. There were times where I may do something on the court. Nick will rise it up and in with a masterful face. Up and under his arm. Do a little dance or something, and he's hollering, get back on defense, get back on defense. We have a really talented, competitive, gritty point guard that doesn't like to be told what to do. Well, that's what the head coach does. When you're young and you're going to sports, you don't know shit. You're just playing. I just, I was just out there hooping. Van Exel for three. Yes, sir! Don't believe it. Don't believe it for a minute. Nick Van Exel's self-proclaimed retirement at season's end just doesn't seem to fit. This guy has too much to offer. He's having too much fun. Nick again. Yes, sir! I really love what I do. Plus, I'm just real excited about, you know, this new situation. I'm excited about the team. We can get some things done. Eight to shoot. Van Exel steps back. Three is good! Van Exel's fearless style put the Lakers back on the map and earned the esteem of legendary Laker Jerry West. He was my favorite Laker by far. By far. Because I could sort of identify with his desire to, to excel. Jerry West was a guy who um, tell you how it is, you know, tell you straight up. Wouldn't really sugarcoat anything. He he went to bat for me several times in L.A. And you know, I really appreciate that. I thought we had found a player that was going to be there for 10 or 15 years. I rooted for him so much because I saw the rough edges going on. When people don't draft players, people talk, they talk about the character of the kid. I will tell you that this is a great kid. And he's going to be a great player. If you want to look for the steal of the 93 draft, this has got to be the guy. The days of Showtime may be over, and the torch has been passed as Nick tries to carry on the Laker legacy. If fans in that era were dazzled by Showtime, what will this generation of fans be dazzled by with you guys? We want to bring back this, basically the same thing with Showtime did. Uh, a lot of excitement, a lot of dunks, uh, always having the crowd into the game three-pointers, tough defense, and guys just running around having fun. You know, everybody with a smile on their face out on the court. Second, Van Exel on the run, and he backs what it you in for three. You know, Nick Van Exel was a very interesting player, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I was a huge fan. Even though he was never this huge superstar, I always loved his game. And it's kind of interesting to, yep, yeah, look back, go back into time and see how good he actually was. Now, in my opinion, there are, yeah, it's pretty difficult to explain how good he really was. If you go back in the 1990s, you had many great point guards. And the greatest ones, for example, like John Stockton or Gary Payton and those guys, they were all great two-way players. And Nick Van Axel was not the greatest defender. He was all right, not the greatest, but okay-ish. But when it comes to his offensive game, I think he had it all. He was a sensational passer, not specifically a pass first point guard, but he could definitely find the open man. He was a great three point shooter, not the best percentage wise, but he could make some crucial shots. He had many game winners. If you go on YouTube, you find it. He was, yeah, he was super clutch, but also his crossovers, his handles. So that guy really had it all offensively. Now, if I would have to compare him and rank him, I would say he was definitely not in the same category as a John Stark and Gary Payton and Penny Hardaway but right beneath it and if he would have not played with um, Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal I think he could have been a superstar and there was also another reason why he never reached that level he was I mean he was a wild guy and he admits it on interviews he says it uh, he was not easy to coach and when he had Del Harris for example as a coach when he was playing for the Lakers Del Harris was such an old-school dude it was not a great match but he showed in his later career I think Van Axel that he could contribute to winning teams so in my opinion I think he had it all he could have been a superstar it was just not in his cars at the end but hey I love that guy and Nick if you see this video this is for you man I was a huge fan of yours and yeah this video came from the heart man and to you guys thanks for tuning in I hope you enjoyed this episode don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel and hopefully you'll see you next time on the basketball time machine